Hello! In this short video, I'm here to provide a brief introduction to Dynatrace and describe who we are, what we do, and show our integration with Pivotal Cloud Foundry. We are Dynatrace, the market leader in digital performance management. We have over 8,000 satisfied customers, including 19 of the top 20 online retailers and 9 of the top 10 U.S. banks. We have over 750 employees like myself in research and development across the world helping improve, support, and build new things. We're excited to be partnered with Pivotal, and we have invested in the continued success of Cloud Foundry as a standard by becoming silver sponsors of the Cloud Foundry Foundation, and we are actively contributing to the community via an organization-wide contributor license agreement. Like Pivotal, we see the movement to cloud native as a step in digital transformation. Also like Pivotal, we're here to help customers deliver better experience to their customers by helping our customers build and operate better software. In this video, I'll be showing our Dynatrace Application Monitoring, or Atmon for short, product that is targeted at issues of code complexity. Many of our shared customers are executing their cloud transformation by carving up monoliths and moving applications to PCF. Dynatrace is the only APM platform supporting full end-to-end -end visibility of every transaction across the cloud transformation journey and across the development lifecycle. As you can see here, we've integrated support across many unit tests and continuous integration and continuous delivery tools to support the later stages of this lifecycle. Now I'm going to briefly explain the integration between Dynatrace Atmon and Pivotal Cloud Foundry. Uh, we have a service broker tile for the Dynatrace Atmon product that is used to provide the environment with the credentials necessary in order to access the Dynatrace Atmon uh, collector. Those collectors are added as dynamic service plans to the tile at deploy time and would then be easily configurable again um, after deployment. And then we can utilize the Apps Manager or the CF CLI to bind the Dynatrace application monitoring service to a running application, or we could utilize a manifest to bind the service at deploy time. Um, in this example, uh, I do have a running service that has not uh, received the Dynatrace Atmon uh, service configuration information yet, so I will be utilizing the PCF apps interface uh, in order to do this. You can see here that we'll just simply go and bind that service. I'm going to use my tile service to bind that, um, and then it is a simple matter of going to the CLI to restage the app. And now at deploy time, um, at restage time, it's going to automatically grab the necessary Atmon bits uh, in order to enable the agent. Um, and then within a few brief moments, uh, we should be able to see that agent um, in the Atmon interface. All right, now as you can see, um, we have a new agent um, that has been deployed to this Cloud Foundry environment um, that is now monitoring the Spring Music application. We're now going to briefly run through the capabilities of the Dynatrace Atmon product um, as it pertains to Pivotal Cloud Foundry environments. Um, Dynatrace is an agent-based solution, and as such, we are able to uh, vis track and visualize the performance of transactions through the system uh, as they come in through any kind of entry point or web request through the various tiers of an application uh, up to and including the data tier, whether that be something like Mongo or Cassandra or um, other environments like Oracle and Postgres and MySQL and so on. Uh, we also then have the ability to uh, take a look at the visits uh, coming into the system. This is based on the user experience management component of Dynatrace, um, which allows us to understand the performance of the client side uh, and then drill that in to the server side as well. So you can see here that we have a particular transaction uh, that ran somewhat long. So we're going to take a look at the uh, response time hotspots for that transaction. 
and you can see here that uh, for this particular transaction, Mongo was the key contributor towards time. And if we click on that, um, it immediately takes us into the database hotspots uh, for that transaction. Additionally, we have the ability to uh, look at what Dynatrace calls our pure path, which is effectively a distributed transaction trace for this particular transaction. Um, and then, you know, additionally, we can go back and, and do things like uh, look at database hotspots uh, for the entirety of the environment uh, over a period of time. So this would be all the Mongo transactions that occurred uh, in this environment in the last 30 minutes. Uh, and then we also have some pretty interesting test automation capabilities. So when folks are doing things like issuing um, J unit tests and so on, we have the ability to deploy our agent uh, inside of the Ant or Maven or what have you JVM that's executing those builds, uh, which gives us the ability to track some pretty interesting metrics um, over the course of those builds, things like uh, database request counts, um, the response time corridors uh, for those requests, uh, how many failures were within that transaction, um, and then you know that is going to be tracked uh, across all the various requests that you might have, and when there's excess volatility, uh, that build can be tracked and possibly flagged, uh, or if there's outright failures, you can choose to not release that build. To support the use of this unit test uh, information in a CI-CD framework, we maintain several plugins across common CI-CD uh, pipeline tools. Um, here you're looking at an example of our Jenkins plugin. You can see that we're tracking our test results uh, immediately uh, right here within the uh, Jenkins project. Uh, you also have the ability to uh, look at those uh, in a little bit more detail over a trend, uh, drill into the results in particular to actually see the, uh, the current results versus the expected. So this represents the end of this video. Um, I want to thank everybody for, for watching what we've been able to show you here today um, and be on the lookout for some additional videos to come from us again in the future. Thank you so much. Goodbye.